Hey folks, Yishai Fleischer here in Kibbutz Ketura. We're about 50 kilometers north of Eilat. Right next to me is a modern day miracle. This is the tree called Metushelach or Methuselah. That's a reference to the Bible's oldest character. And the reason this tree is called Metushelach is because Although it looks young, it's actually a 2,000-year-old tree. Well, the truth is, the seed that was found is a 2,000-year-old seed. That seed of this Judean palm was found on Mount Masada. It was probably a remnant of the 2,000-year-ago fight between the people at Masada and the Roman legion that uh, encircled them, surrounded them, and besieged them in order to get rid of them, to destroy them. This is what's left of them. And the scientists here at the Arava Institute at Kibbutz Keturah were given the challenge to make this tree come to life again. And here it is. It has come back to life, and it is really an honor just to stand next to it. Dr. Elaine Soloway, you're a botanist, and you're working here at the Arava Institute. Behind me is Methuselah, um, a tree, a tree, but for some reason this is a big deal. Tell me why. Uh, this tree was sprouted from a, a date pit found in Masada uh, by uh, Yigal Yadin and given to Hebrew University and later transferred to Bar Ilan by Echud Netzer. And it was given to me in a handful of seeds by Dr. Sarah Salon from um, Hadassah from the Natural Medicines Research Center, who asked me to try to sprout the seeds. And this is the only seed that came up of the handful of seeds I was given. So the seeds, uh, when were they from uh, the 1500s, the 1700s? They were dated between 35 and 65 AD by radiocarbon dating in two places. Which makes it in the uh, Gregorian? <laughs> makes it almost 2,000 years old. So this is a 2,000 year old uh, baby tree? This is a 2,000 year old baby, is that what I'm saying? This is a, a 6 year old tree from a 2,000 year old seed. This is indeed one of the most secure trees I've ever seen. It's got 24 hour surveillance by camera and also motion detectors surrounding it. They want to keep this tree safe. And you call him Methuselah for the biblical character, which is... Uh, 969 years old. Now, what's important about this tree is that could this be a remnant of what they call the, the Judean uh, date, Judean palm tree? That's our hope. We hope it's a, uh, a uh, seedling of the Judean date line. And there's some things that indicate that that may be true. Now, what was it a different tree than what we used today? What do we use today? Explain to me, what does that mean? Why is that important? Well, all of our commercial dates come from um, the Gulf area, actually, yeah, or from Morocco. Uh, we have two main types down here, Majul and Dekel Noor, and uh, they were imported into Israel through California. Um, as far as the, the varietal dates from biblical times ago, they went extinct when no one was left to take care of them. We still have wild dates dating back to that period, but the varietal dates are gone. And these were apparently very good. The Romans, the Roman em emperors preferred them to the dates in, in what they called the known world, you know, nowadays. But that was all the area that they knew. They said that the Jews had the best dates. It was probably true since they had absolutely nothing nice to say about the Jews other than that. <laughs> so uh, they were also used medicinally. And um, there were apparently several varieties, some of them quite large. So we're hoping we have some of the genes from, from that line. In this one tree? In this one tree. So this is a pretty emotional thing. This is, this is, this is, uh, not, uh, this is not just a tree. This thing that I'm looking at is part of, uh, if I may wax uh, emotional philosophical here, this is part of the redemption and return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel. Uh, you, one could definitely see it that way, yes. Um, it's very, very exciting to have a biblical plant come back to life like this. And we're hoping to learn a lot. It's a male, so we can't immediately get fruit, but if we have gene capture, we can do something with those genes. Dr. Elaine Soloway, tell me a little bit about how you were able to sprout, how you were able to uh, help this guy grow and give him that, that fertility, that love, what was the technology uh, behind the blessing? Well, basically, um, we developed a protocol for moistening the seed uh, 
to see if any membranes were left intact and use different growth hormones to get the shoot and the root going. And then we gave uh, the tree a good dose of enzymatic fertilizer so that if the seed and the, f the food and the seed wasn't valid, there would still be some chance for the plant to come up. It was actually not very healthy for the first months after it came up. It was very, very pale in color. I was worried that perhaps it couldn't make chlorophyll, but it stabilized. And three, four months after um, the tree sprouted, we knew that it was going to be okay. Dates are tough little things. What's the future for Methuselah? Well, we're going to see if we can get Methuselah a mate. And if not, we're going to get him a girlfriend from his closest genetic line that lives now in modern times, which is an old variety from Egypt called Hiani. And then? We're going to cross-pollinate them and see what we get. Okay, so cross pollination. So you're you're a we're making him an arranged marriage. You're Shad Khanit. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, I can't wait to you know, is am I right that your hope is one day to see fruit yes. from uh, Methuselah? Yes. It would have been more convenient if he if the tree turned out to be Mrs. Methuselah. But Mr. Methuselah is good too. It's just gonna take a little longer. Could it be that this was a pit that was spit out by by Elazar Ben Yair out at uh, Masada when they were fighting the Romans? It could have been spit out by someone, or it could have been left as a fruit that wasn't used in the Maksan, uh, the storehouse that it was found in. It's impossible to tell. We can, of course, speculate. And that makes a very good story, by the way. Um, we know that many pits were found, so there must have been food stores in this particular collapsed building. Uh, it's just that some of them were not even identifiable, and this was the only one that was alive in the sheets I was given. Amazing. And I am looking forward to seeing Methuselah grow and to eat from his delicious fruit, his 2,000-year-old uh, fruit, uh, brought back to life six years ago. Dr. Elaine Soloway from the Arava Institute, thank you so much. Okay, thank you for coming.